for this. Okay, so this is our review for our circles test for tomorrow. Okay, so you've got an object made of three semicircles and you need to find the area of a shaded part. Who's got an answer for us? Mateo? Yeah. I got it. I have a different answer. What do you have, Mike Hoy? Annie, what do you have? Okay, Finn. Okay, let's do it together, guys. All right, the area of the large circle. First of all, we need to find the area of the large circle. Then we need to find the area of the two small half circles, and then we need to sub. Then we need to subtract, right? How do I find the area of the large semicircle? What's my formula for that? Alex? One half pi r squared. Good job. One half pi r squared. Okay, so um, one half times 22 over seven times 140 times 140. Did you guys set that up correctly? Yeah. yeah. Gabby? Yeah. yeah. Let's see, look at the look at the diagram right here, Gabby. So that's a that's a radius right there, the 140. Oh, yeah. So I think you were were you thinking that's a diameter? Okay, so let's go ahead and cross cancel that seven, and that goes into 140 20 times. So now we have that the area of the large circle is 11 times 20 times 140. All right, let's do 11 times 20. What's 11 times two, class? 22. Okay, so 220 times 140. Okay. And the area of the large circle, let's do that a little bit of work over here. What's What do you think the answer is, Anthony, for this part? Okay, Gabby? Okay, let's check your, check your work here. One, two, whoops. One, four times eight is eight. Four times two, excuse me, is eight. And then we've got to multiply the hundreds, we've got one times zero is zero, one times two is two, one times two is two. And so we should have eight, ooh, I'm running out of room. 30,800, is that what you just said? Good job, okay. Okay, now, how much of the, like what portion of a circle do I need to find next for the small circles? What is it, yeah. Yeah, I know, but what do I need to subtract from the large circle? Okay, and what is the total? Like, I have two semicircles there, so I can find just the area of a what, guys? Yeah, just find the area of a circle, so pi r squared. All right, my, what's my radius on the smaller semicircles, class? 70, yes. So the area of the small circle is gonna be 22 over seven times seven over one times seven over one. We can cross cancel one of those. 70, 70. whoopsie daisies, thank you. Okay, so now I've got 220 times 70, which is gonna be half of that 30,000, isn't it? Okay. So that will equal 15,400. Good. Yes. What'd you get for the final answer then? Okay, my koi? We have to subtract, bud. So we have to subtract 15,400 from 30,800. And conveniently, remember that 15,400 is half of the other one. So what's the answer, Kinsey? Yeah, exactly. The total area is gonna be 15,400 centimeters squared. Good job. Okay. Alex. Yeah, you can do it that way too. We've had a couple of those problems where we have like some semicircles that are half as big. So you can conclude that they're half the amount of area. Gabby? Okay. All right. How about this one? You needed to find the area first and then the perimeter. So I've got two curved edges. We'll do the, oh, we're doing the area first, excuse me. All right, so how how can I find the area of this? Yes, Annie. Um, the area of the... Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Good. Nice job with the twos. 
the radius equals two on that. Yes, good job. Okay, nice job. Wait a second here, four times 16. Two times 16 is 32. 16 times four is 64. I think you read your notes wrong. Okay, and then, at, then what do I need to do? Yeah, and you're gonna get what? Seventy-six point five six square feet. Nice job, team effort back there. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Any questions on that one, guys? Is that pretty clear? Thanks. Thank you. Again, can you set up? Thank you. Okay, let's do the perimeter then. How would we find the perimeter of this figure? Austin, can you set up, please? Thank you. Gabby, what would you do? Uh, start with the circle. Start with the curved edges? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the ID. Okay. Uh, so it's 3.14, and then the diameter is 4. Good. So 3.14 times 4. Yep. Good, 12.56 feet. Now what do I need to do to find perimeter now that I've got the circumference of those curved edges? What do I do next, Ashley? So I've got these two. Remember perimeter is around a figure. So I want to go all the way around. You would add 16. Now that would give me this length right here. Then what else do I add? Uh, no, you wouldn't add four. That's just the diameter. I want to add this portion right here. I've got one more length up there. Yep. So 12.56 plus 16 plus 16. Okay. So what's the final answer on the perimeter, Austin? You guys should be doing these with me, please. Make sure that you're writing what you see up here. No, let's estimate. We've got 16 plus 16 is 32 plus 12 is gonna be 44. So do another answer, try again. Yep, 44.56, what? Yes, good job, okay. Let's go ahead and keep going just to make sure that we get all of these problems in. All right. So how many of you got this far to the like spirally thing? Good. All right. I'm gonna the first question is to find the area. So how do I find the area? If you got here, what was your strategy for finding area? Kala? Okay, so you did pi r squared because why? Make one whole circle, good. So this is a little challenging, right? How do we do pi r square? We've got 147 inches. What's my radius right there? Elin? What did you say? 49? Great job. How did you get there? Yes, good job, because we've got three quarter circles right in a row here. So 147 divided by three is correct. All right, so my radius, we're gonna do 22 over seven because we've got a multiple of seven times 49 over one times 49 over one. And we'll cross cancel one time at least. We've got 22 times seven times 49. And what did we get for the area on that, on the circle? Charlie? Uh, 6,000 what? 6,074, is that right class? It's not right, let's let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so we've got 22 times seven, 20 times seven would be 140 plus 14, that would be 154. And then we've got 22 times 49. 
So we're going to have to, I'm going to have to use my, pull out my multi-digit multiplication skills here. And I'm going to do 154 times 49. Okay, so if you maybe go ahead and do this with me, guys, make sure that you're, you're right. We've got 36. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 3 is 48. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 4 is 13. We've got 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Are we looking good so far, class? Okay, 4 plus 1 is 5, oh, 7,546. Great, so I'm done, right? Oh. oh, what else do I have to do? Alex? Find the, the area of the square. Find the area of the square and then what? And then that. Okay. So area equals length times width. And the length of the side of the square is the same as the radius. So we've got 49 times 49. Alex, what did you get for the area of the square? Um, 2,401. 2, yeah. Who else got 2,401? Oh, we didn't get that far? Well, all right, we'll have to do it. <laughs> 49 times 49, We've got some disagreement here. All right, nine times nine is 81. Nine times four is 36 plus eight is 44, right guys? Nah, and then we've got the same thing again, because we've got four times nine, which is 81 again, and four times four, which is, no, we don't have the same thing again which is 16 plus eight, which is 24. Did I do that first line? Did I mess that up? I think I did, didn't I? 81, no, nine times four is 36 plus eight is 44. Okay, then we add a zero because now we're multiplying tens. Four times nine is, that. that's what I messed up right there. That's what I did. Yeah, okay. Four times four is 16 plus three is? 19. Yeah, that was definitely not right. I was trying to go on autopilot, but it didn't work. Four times four is 16 plus three is 19. Now I think we're golden, right? We've got five plus nine, which is 14, 2,401. Good job, Charlie. Is that what you said? No. That's what you said? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good job. Team, all right, now we have to add them together. And what's our answer? Go ahead and add them together now, you guys. Area total equals 7,546 plus 2,401. Kinsey, what do you have? Inches squared. Good job, you got the right answer. Way to go. Okay, you guys feel like your brain's getting a workout? No, no. no that was just easy? No, no. I see a lot of you just kind of waiting on the, the work to flash up there. All right, perimeter, how am I gonna find perimeter? How am I gonna find perimeter? Anthony. Yep, what portion of a circle will I need to find here? Yeah, we're going to find a whole circle. So if my radius is 49, what's my diameter, you guys, that I want to use for this? What's the diameter? Alex? Well, that's my formula, yes. What is the diameter that I will use? Gabby? 98. 49 times 2. Yep, 98. Good job. So 98. All right, so my circumference is 22 over 7 times 98 over one. What do you have, Charlie? Oh, I have a... Okay, what's your idea? Since there's four straight, I just found the perimeter of the square in the middle, and then I didn't edit, and I didn't solve the edge of the square. Okay, so you... You just multiply the radius times four. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But then what did you have to add? The, the, yeah, the circumference. So what did you get for the circumference part? It's got it, guys. I know we can cross cancel that seven and the 98. What do you have, Caleb? 300 and what? 
308? Are you sure? Hang on, let's just check. All right. How many times does seven go into 98? Well, if seven goes into 49 seven times, it would go into 98 14 times, right? Right, okay. I think my math is right on that. And then we have 22 times 14. So 20 times 14 would be two, no. What would 20 times 14 be, guys? 280 plus 28. So 280 plus 28 would be 308. Is that what you said? Good job. That's what Caleb said. All right, and then Charlie, you suggested adding on, just multiplying those straight sides by four. So we're gonna multiply 49 times four or 98 times two. So I can do that in my head. 100 times two would be 200, but we have two less on those. So we should be at 196. Okay. All right, so the final perimeter is what, Caleb? Great job. All right, 504 inches. Nice job, guys. Yay. Okay, let's do a little bit of review. All right, so for tomorrow, guys, for the circles portion, know how know the two formulas that you guys need, right? Eyes up here. Know the two formulas that you need. Know how to find area and circum or perimeter of partial shapes. Okay, so like semicircles, quarter circles, and then also composite shapes. So like when you got it, when you have quarter circles that are all together and they're all they look weird, but you might rearrange them and they make a full circle. I think everybody kind of understands that now. You guys are doing great with that. Um, just remember perimeter though, you've got to add those straight sides back in. Okay, as always, we will have a cumulative section. So we've been reviewing some cumulative problems um, over the last couple of days. We're gonna do an algebra and a percentage review right now. So really quick, you guys, Larry bought X books, y, y files, and Z pens from a school supply store. Each book cost $10, each file cost $5, and each pen cost $2. How much did all the items cost? Express the answer in terms of X, Y, and Z. All right, write it down and then raise your hand when you can tell me the correct way to write that algebraic expression. Okay, Austin, tell me what to do. Well, like the how would I write the algebraic expression? Okay, ten x plus five y plus two z, and you said all of that. I gotta correct my in parentheses, and then what? And dollar sign. Great job, Annie. Um, that would be the wrong way to what you would have to do is if you did each coefficient and variable by variable by itself you'd have to repeat the dollar sign so it would look like this so don't just don't do that because that's a lot of extra writing and that's not really the most efficient way to write it okay all right percentages victoria saves a dollar 20 in a month do you have a question on that last problem? Okay, then keep your hands on please until we're done with this one. Um, this is 20% less than she saved last month. How much money did Victoria save last month? Okay, you guys remember, whatever we're comparing to is our 100%. You can put the ruler away. We don't need that for this lesson. All right, so whatever we're comparing to is 100%. So do you have an idea, Maddie? What's your answer? What'd you get? That is incorrect. What'd you get? That is incorrect also. Okay. Nora. Oh, wait. Okay, we do have to solve this one using unitary method, but the trick is we've got to assign the right percentage to that $120 a month. What do you think, Bastian? Yes, tell me how you got there. Okay, well, we're not gonna do that in our head. So let who can tell me how to get there with appropriate work? Elijah? Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. So, okay, so you got me 80% is what, Anthony? Yeah, so the 80% is $120, okay? Because last month she saved X amount and that's our 100% because that's what we're comparing to. So now we need, oopsie Daisy, let's get back there. Now we need to use unitary method to solve it. Okay, so we're gonna take it down to 1%. And I don't like to do all this cross canceling until the end. It's not because sometimes it's just easier to leave it like it is because you know I'm going to end up multiplying by both sides by 100 in just a second. And I might have my cross canceling might be more convenient once I've got all of the numbers written out. Like, for example, right now I can see with that 80, with that 80 and 100, I can cross cancel some zeros. I'm going to go ahead and divide by two and I'm going to get four down here and I'm going to get five up here. Now I'm going to divide four and 120 by four, right? So I'll get, yeah, go ahead. What do I get on top there, Elijah? Yep, I get 30. Now it's really easy. I just have 100% equals 30 times five, which equaled $150, okay? But make sure that you have, I don't see your work written down there, bud. That's, it's great if you can find it on one problem, but you need to be able to replicate it. Gabby? Um, I took it down to 2%. Oh, okay, you could do it that way. And then you multiply by five. I like that. That's an easy way to do it too. Good job. Okay, let's see if you guys can remember how to do these, this kind of problem. Oh, I have another one. I thought I had the challenge problem for you guys next, but do you have this problem on there? Um, let's do this one really quick. The challenge problem you can do on your own tonight. It'll be real fun. All right, a concert hall has a capacity for 4,000 people, 30,000 of the tickets, just do on the, this in the blank space on the bottom, you guys, 30,000 of the tickets were sold in the first week and 2,320 tickets were sold in the second week. How many tickets were sold in the first week? What would I do here? If 30% of the tickets were sold in the first week, do this. There were 4,000 to start and they sold 30% in the first week. How do I find that? Kala? What's that? Yeah? Nope, it says it had a capacity for 4,000. So it's times 4,000 over. Okay, so then we can just do 30 times 40, which is gonna be 1,200 tickets. Okay, the reason we're multiplying it by 4,000 is because it said that they sold 30% of the available tickets. And then in the second week, 2,326 tickets were sold. So letter B says, what percentage of tickets were sold during the first and second weeks? Let's go ahead and add those. 1,200 plus 2,320, and we'll find that as a percentage of 4,000. Okay, so we want to find out what, that's a five right there, you guys, what percentage of 4,000 is 3,520? So we can do some cross canceling here. Remember when we change to a percentage, we can multiply by 100 over one, or we can divide um, and get that denominator down to a 100. But now we've got 352 divided by four. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that long division. And it looks like, what's my percentage, guys? 88%. All right, your homework for tonight. Anthony, have a seat while we wrap up. Okay, Elijah, you're going this area worksheet. So this is just more area practice. So you guys are going to have to be able to know the area of a rectangle and a triangle and a circle. 